So let us draw the diagram of this fluid mosaic model based on the information which was given by Singer and Nichols. We are drawing this phospholipid bilayer and same thing we would just show the heads and the two tails and in the other layer again the same thing the tails are pointing towards each other. So these are phospholipid molecules by layer. Proteins are alpha globular and are, and are of two types. The extrinsic proteins are attached to the head part. So these two layers they become extrinsic proteins. Intrinsic proteins as mentioned by Singer and Nicholson they are partially or completely embedded. Partially means the protein is partially embedded in this or if we have to show the completely embedded protein, then this is how it is going to be. Let us extend this uh, membrane a little more here and on this side also. So these are phospholipids and proteins. Let us label all these parts. This one is extrinsic protein and this also is extrinsic protein and extrinsic proteins are attached to the heads of the phospholipid. Here also they are attached to the head, here also they are attached and they are attached loosely. This is the phospholipid bilayer. Phospholipid bilayer. This big protein which is completely embedded is intrinsic protein intrinsic protein whereas this one which is partially um, embedded we will also call this as intrinsic so whether it is completely embedded or partially embedded if it is embedded then it is called intrinsic protein so there are two types of proteins extrinsic and intrinsic let us now talk about the movement of phospholipids. Phospholipids show two types of movements as mentioned by them. So to understand them, that, that movement, we number it. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. And here we write A, B, C, D, E and F. So these are the phospholipid molecules. If phospholipid molecules move in the same layer, that means one moves from here. Suppose these are the two molecules. And 1 comes in the position of 4 and 4 comes in the position of 1. So after that, 1 is going to be here and 4 is going to be here. This movement will be called transition movement. Transition is when the movement of phospholipid is taking place in the same layer. If we are talking of the other type of movement, that is flip-flop. In flip-flop, the particles move like this. Suppose it is 2 and C. So C goes here and 2 comes here. So there is a change or movement between the two layers. So this becomes C and this becomes 2. So this movement is flip-flop movement. Whereas this movement is transition movement. So these are the two types of movements which are shown by the phospholipid molecules. Now on the basis of this we will check whether this model explains all three properties or not. The first property was entry of fat soluble substance. Fat soluble. Fat soluble substance was going through all membranes whether it was uh, Daniel E. Davison's model or Robertson's model. So here also there is no uh, obstruction or hindrance for the entry of fat soluble. The problem was water soluble because this layer was acting as a barrier layer. But can now this protein help in the movement of water soluble substance? So this protein, because protein was not creating any problem for water movement. Problem was created by this hydrophobic tail part. So water soluble substance comes in. That means this completely embedded protein or intrinsic protein is acting as a channel. So 
the name which is given to this is channel protein also because of its function it is helping as or it is acting as a channel for the entry of water soluble substance the first problem in this first point has been solved or explained by this membrane that means the membrane allows fat soluble substances as well as water soluble substances to come in so first point has been explained let us see the second point the second point was that plasma membrane shows variable protein to phospholipid ratio suppose we take this much piece of plasma membrane how many proteins and how many phospholipids counting 1 2 extrinsic 3 4 extrinsic and 5 so there are five proteins which are there how many phospholipids 1 2 3 4 and 5 phospholipids are there so at this moment the ratio of proteins to phospholipids is this but the proteins can also move the external or uh, the extrinsic proteins suppose this protein has to carry something then this protein is going to move from its place and come here so when this protein is gone one protein is less when phospholipid moves say for example we were talking about initially this transition movement let us put them in the original position this is one and four now we are checking whether the ratio is going to change or not this is phospholipid number one this is phospholipid number four and they are showing transition movement so a one this first protein it moves from its position four is also going to come here at this moment one is not here four has not reached here that means there is no phospholipid at this time so has the number gone down the proteins are as it is phospholipid has gone down to four ratio has changed so if phospholipids are moving ratio is going to change if proteins are moving then the ratio are going to or the ratio is going to change that means this model explains variable protein to phospholipid ratio also now comes the third point the third point is the dynamic nature dynamic nature fluidic nature is possible only when one molecule or one particle moves on the other one and to explain this they gave a phrase for their model they said our model is like protein icebergs in the sea of lipids protein icebergs in the sea of lipids that means they are comparing the proteins with icebergs and the lipid with C. Icebergs are huge chunks of ice and they are floating in the water. And why are they able to float? Because water is fluidic. So if one thing is able to move on the other layer, that other layer has to be fluidic. And if it is fluidic, it is flexible, it is dynamic. So, protein icebergs in the sea of lipid. They are comparing proteins, especially the extrinsic proteins to icebergs and this lipid layer as a fluidic layer. And to explain the nature of lipid, they said the lipid or plasma membrane is quasi-fluid. Quasi-fluid is exactly jelly-like uh, consistency where it is neither solid nor liquid and but it is fluidic so that something can move on it and this membrane explains all three properties of plasma membrane so now what we know is that it is made up of proteins and phospholipids we know proteins are alpha globular phospholipids are amphipathic they show two types of movements proteins are of two types intrinsic and extrinsic and this model explains all the properties of plasma membrane plus there are two informations which are added from the previous uh, scientists information that is the pore size of plasma membrane plasma membrane is porous and the pore size is 7 to 10 angstroms and the thickness thickness is 75 to 100 angstroms 
angstroms. Thickness was given by Robertson and pore size was given by Daniel and Dapson. So all information uh, together is used by Singer and Nicholson and they called their model as protein icebergs in the sea of lipid. And as it is able to explain all the properties, this model is an accepted model and till date we are using the same model.